Now we can talk about state functions. Uh, the value of a state function depends only on the present state of the system. It, it's pathway independent. It doesn't matter how, how the system reached that state. All that matters is that it's currently at that particular state. So for example, we have a, a sample of water here and it's at 25 degrees Celsius. And it has a certain amount of internal energy, a certain amount of kinetic and potential energy. Um, it doesn't matter if it was hot water that cooled down or if it was uh, cold water that, that heated up. All that matters is right now it has a certain amount of energy just because it's at its present state. Um, another example, uh, if, uh, position, just, just talk, talk about potential energy. So you're on the second floor of a building. There are lots of ways to get to the second floor of a building. You can take the elevator, you can take the escalator, um, you can take the stairs. They're all gonna require a different amount of uh, work and heat being expended, but in the end, um, you were you know at the first floor, now you're at the second floor. Now you're at the second floor, this is how much energy you have there. Um, so work and heat are not state functions, but energy is. Internal energy is a state function. It doesn't, it's, it's pathway independent. It doesn't matter how you got there. Um, but work and heat are, are pathway dependent. It does depend on how you got there. So here's one more example. We have a battery and you have a full battery and then you can either short it out, do no work, uh, and you had a full battery. Now you have a, a dead battery. Um, so you can, you know, the, the change in internal energy is the same as if over here, if you had, if you ran a fan, you ran a fan on this uh, single double A battery. Um, that's a great fan. So you can, that, that'll take a lot more work to do, but in the end, you, you had a, a full battery and now you have an empty battery this time. Um, so the energy in that battery doesn't depend on, um, you know, whether you did all this work or you just shorted it out. It's, um, it's pathway independent, but work and heat are not state functions. So work and heat are not state functions, um, but the change in internal energy is a state function. It's pathway independent, doesn't depend on the pathway. And so another state function um, is something called enthalpy. So you may have heard of enthalpy before. Enthalpy is H, and we define it in a very particular way. Enthalpy is also a state function. So the, the great thing about state functions is that it, it's, it, they're pathway independent. That means they're really easy to work with mathematically. Um, and so we define enthalpy to be the sum of its internal energy, right? So we have E plus any kind of pressure volume work that's being done. So if we had a gas and it's expanding at constant pressure, then it's changing its volume. And that's the work that's being done there with the, um, here we go, work down here. Work is the, uh, is this equation here. And we're not really going to use this equation. We're going to, uh, I'll show it in this derivation down here of how we get to enthalpy and how we relate it to heat instead. Uh, but we're not going to do any homework problems involving this sort of thing. I think actually, I think there's one homework problem that um, that basically this is the answer. If you, if you're not doing any pressure volume work, if delta if the volume doesn't change and the, and the pressure is constant, then um, this p delta v term is zero, and then you're not doing any work, so work would be zero. You'll see, look for that one in the homework. Um, but what are we looking for here? We're just kind of defining a new term called enthalpy, and we said enthalpy. Um, when the system changes at constant pressure, this is the uh, this is what delta H is the change in enthalpy. It's related to the change in energy and any kind of pressure volume work that's being done. So this delta again, that's like your final mass initially. You're just kind of distributing this delta here uh, by the variables. Pressure is a constant, so you have delta H. Uh, delta H is equal to delta E plus P delta V. Uh, and what do we know about delta E? Delta E is also equal to Q plus W, which is great because Q and W, we have really easy definitions for those. We can calc we can um, measure those experimentally. Uh, work is also equal to negative P delta V. So for E, I just plug in Q plus W, and then P delta V, well, that's equal to negative work because W equals negative P delta V. Uh, and so basically your work terms kind of cancel out, and you get that at constant pressure, delta H is just equal to Q, which is great. This is heat. Heat's really easy to measure experimentally. We're going to measure temperature changes and relate that to heat. So this is really easy to measure experimentally. And then delta H is really easy to work with because it's a state function. So this is easy to work with mathematically, and this is easy to measure experimentally. Uh, so we were able to define delta H in such a way that it's a state function. It doesn't depend on its pathway independent, but it's, it's equal to, under certain conditions like constant pressure, it's equal to the heat. Of it, which is really easy to measure. So we're just going to measure temperature changes. Um, endothermic is if delta H is positive. So now we can use these terms again, but instead of just talking about internal energy, we'll, we'll, we will relate it to enthalpy. So 
delta H is positive for an endothermic reaction and it's negative for an exothermic reaction. So let's answer some questions about uh, enthalpy here. One example. Indicate the sign of the enthalpy change um, in these processes carried out under atmospheric pressure and indicate whether the process is endothermic or exothermic. So we kind of already talked about an ice cube melting. When an ice cube melts, it goes from a solid to a liquid. So is it absorbing energy or is it releasing energy? When you go from a solid to a liquid, when you're melting, it's going to absorb energy. So it absorbs energy. So does that make it endothermic or exothermic? That makes it endothermic. All right. Now the next one, you have a combustion reaction. So you may remember that combustion reactions release a lot of heat. So this is going to release heat. So you're releasing energy, release energy. And so um, it's going to be exothermic. Exothermic, so delta H here is going to be negative. Delta H over here is going to be positive for an endothermic and negative for an exothermic reaction.